This video was sponsored by CuriosityStream. Get access to my video streaming service, Nebula, when you sign up for CuriosityStream using the link in the description. When people hear the word cult, a certain image tends to burst into their brain. Brainwashed devotees worshipping a crazed narcissist and willing to sacrifice anything for them. While Jonestown, Heaven's Gate and the Solar Temple have given cults a violent reputation, most cults tend to keep a much lower profile. Cults are everywhere. There's probably a cult in your town, and the tricks they use to lure people in aren't complicated, but rather tried and tested social manipulation tactics that anyone can fall for. So what is a cult? How do they trap people? And how do people end up believing that volcano alien ghosts are living on their bodies? Well, let's find out. A cult can form around anything. Politics, religion, business, self-improvement, therapy, hate, aliens, meditation, YouTube channels, and eco-friendly lifestyles. Cults are not solely religious, and not all new religious movements or unorthodox groups are cults. Cult does not mean religion or group I don't like, but refers to a very specific structure and characteristics. The Symbionese Liberation Army, famous for kidnapping Paddy Hearst, was a political cult. Amway is a corporate cult. And the Children of God, the cult that Joaquin Phoenix was raised in, that's a religious cult. Rastafarianism, Baha'i, Wicca, those are new religious movements, but not cults. They don't deceive people into joining, and they don't demand their followers cut off ties with non-Rastafarian friends and family. It isn't their beliefs that make a cult, it's their authoritarian structure their deceptive recruitment, and how controlling they are. That's why cults are also called totalist groups, and why they share their structure with totalitarian regimes. Cults aren't about belief, they're about control. And to spot a cult, you just have to look out for these three characteristics. One, a charismatic and authoritarian leader. Cult leaders always have two qualities, charisma and authoritarianism. A cult leader needs to have enough confidence, charm, and drive to pull people in, and they're always narcissists. Cult leaders like Jim Jones, Soko Ashihara, and Marshall Applewhite all fit at least eight of the nine criteria for people with narcissistic personality disorder. Their charisma and grandiose sense of self-importance attract people, but after that initial charm, their authoritarian nature and lack of empathy creates a culture of fear and terror which keeps people in the cult. The energy that I felt from him put me into a state of almost fear and awe because when somebody says and starts owning that he may be or kind of is a representative of the kingdom of heaven, there's kind of a energy that's exchanged between the two people. It's like there's a charge that goes on. Two. Thought reform. Coercive persuasion, brainwashing, mind control, whatever you want to call it. It's a process through which people can change the minds and thoughts of other people without them realizing it's happening. Cults, along with other cult-like groups such as terrorist organizations, hate groups, and totalitarian movements all use thought reform. It even happens in cases of domestic abuse. Thought reform or brainwashing doesn't turn people into zombies or Manchurian candidates. There's no secret drugs or hypnosis going on. It's simply words and group pressures. We'll look at how cults use thought reform to manipulate people in a bit. Three, exploitation. Once a charismatic leader has indoctrinated a follower through thought reform, they can begin exploiting them economically, psychologically, politically, or sexually. He was doing so much in the community. And so why not, rather than just tie through 20%, why not sell your home? give the money to the church. And that is what people began to do. So how do people end up in cults? Well, people end up in cults or totalist groups in a number of different ways. Many are kidnapped or forcibly enlisted, like the estimated 20,000 children forced into Joseph Coney's Lord's Resistance Army. Once forced into these groups, their charismatic and authoritarian leaders can begin indoctrination. Or you can be born into a cult or totalitarian regime. The children raised in the Children of God cult, or North Korean citizens, didn't choose to be in the cult they're in, but both of them 
are exposed to the same thought reform processes and authoritarianism. Or you can be recruited into a cult. There is a common stereotype of a typical cult recruit, a seeker, a slightly wacky hippie type, very into hummus and crystals, who went looking for enlightenment, found a cult and can now assemble a Kalashnikov while doing yoga. But study after study has discovered that there is no personality profile for your typical terrorist or cult recruit. Any of us could become vulnerable given the right conditions, the right group and the right time. Major life changes such as a recent move, a breakup, a death in the family, career shift, war, natural disaster or a global pandemic can leave someone isolated from their usual support structures. During these times, we all tend to look for friends, are more open to strangers and are more willing to accept things we normally wouldn't. Usually it's the cults that go out and look for followers. And cults recruit everywhere. Lectures, seminars, retreats, going door to door. They run schools, businesses, political groups, meditation and yoga classes, weight loss programs and therapy clinics. Most cults even have front groups set up to appeal to a wide range of interests. The Unification Church, commonly known as the Moonies, have hundreds of front groups including academic and professional groups, dozens of businesses and media such as the New World Encyclopedia and the Washington Times. The Church of Scientology has front groups like Sterling Management who do corporate training or the Narconon Drug Rehabilitation Program or hilariously the Cult Awareness Network is also a Scientology front group. Cults are always deceptive during recruitment. New recruits will interact with a front group unaware that it's related to a cult. There is never any mention of galactic overlords, celibacy, polygamy, suicide missions, 20 hour workdays or forced marriages. That all comes much later. For now it's just a group interested in bettering themselves and the world through mindfulness or new biblical interpretations or a public speaking workshop, nothing to worry about. The Unification Church calls this heavenly deception. Other Bible based cults call it giving milk before meat. It's okay to lie to new recruits because in the end it's for their own good. Once within reach, the new recruit will be love bombed. Love bombing is a tactic in which cult members smother new recruits with flattery, praise and affection. Love bombing is extremely effective on anyone, but especially so on people who already feel isolated and ignored. New recruits will gradually find their free time filled with group classes, meetings, dinners and retreats. Recruits lives are swallowed up by the group. Their entire day is filled with cult related work assignments, studying, lectures, meditating, chanting etc etc. This has the added benefit of keeping the recruit awake for long periods, which affects their critical thinking abilities and simply leaves them with no time to reflect on what's actually happening. You're constantly up, you're constantly busy. Uh, and you're made to feel guilty if you take too many luxuries like sleeping. You tend to not really think for yourself and I did allow Jones to think for me. Many cults will then begin to pressure new members to leave their family, friends and jobs. Free Domain Radio is an internet based cult led by self proclaimed philosopher Stefan Molyneux, known for its practice of encouraging its new recruits to defoo, to reject their family of origin. This isolation tactic is common in cults to force a recruit to become dependent on the group. Removing family removes a fundamental source of emotional and financial support for people and an important source of reality checking. Romantic relationships and friendships must also be scrutinized even within the group. This is why many cults practice either celibacy or polygamy because it stops people from forming a close romantic bond with just one person. The only relationship they can have must be with the entire group or the leader. To replace families, many cult leaders take on familial ties. David Berg, head of the Children of God, was known as Dad or Grandpa. Elizabeth Clare, prophet of the Church Universal and Triumphant, was Mother. And Paul Pot, leader of the Khmer Rouge, was known as Brother Number One. Many cults encourage confessing traumas either to the whole cult or with an assigned member. Before I came here, I was taking LSD, marijuana, every type of dope you can imagine. Without our pastor Jim Jones to teach me the right way, I would not be in college right now. The cult will usually lead the recruit to exaggerate or even misremember their pasts negatively. This causes guilt and anxiety about their former personal connections and past. They were bad people before they joined the group, 
and the group is the only way they can become better people. In my last lifetime, I lived during World War II, and I was a, a French prostitute that I had taken up with a German officer just to protect my butt. The French resistance found out about me, and they threw me and all my belongings out in the street. And the mob that mobbed me and shaved my head there is the reason why I was so afraid of crowds now. The group will position itself as the only sanctuary in which these feelings can be expressed. So now the follower will seek more comfort from the group, even though it's the group that's causing their discomfort. Everyone is constantly confessing things to the cult. Sharing anything to one member of the cult means sharing it to everyone. So privacy does not exist. They cannot share doubts or complaints or tell anyone if they're being abused. The lack of free time, the sleep deprivation, and the complete destruction of individuality means that there is no time for self-reflection. Recruits suffer from a triple isolation, from friends and family, from other cult members, and from their own mind. As the follower grows more isolated, they begin to rely on approval from the cult, and this is where human weakness to peer pressure can be used against them. Even when a cult member has doubts, they are made to feel that they are wrong. When they look around, they see only happy, believing followers. No one expresses any doubt. And so when a follower feels doubt, they feel alone and wrong. It is them that must work harder to understand the group. The group or the leader is never wrong. I'd look around and I'd say, am I the only one that feels this way? I learned eventually not to, um, not to say anything to anyone. In a cult, you are rewarded for good behaviour with praise and privileges, but those that behave in the wrong way are shunned and punished. So as the cult is isolating you from your ordinary reality, they provide you with a new and unanimously approved worldview. Now when all or nothing point of view begins to be preached to them, they teach that every single word of the ideology is completely true or none of it is. If you have any doubts, you will be excluded and you will suffer. The way that these ideas are told also matters. Every cult or totalitarian system has its own loaded language. Scientology, for example, uses terms like reactive mind, suppressive person, and case gain. Loaded language prevents followers from expressing anything outside the cult's ideology. New, vague words that can stand for anything are used without the things themselves actually being discussed. Why listen to your family telling you you're in a cult when they're suppressive people and you know suppressive people shouldn't be listened to? All kinds of horrible names are given to non-cult members. Systemites, unclean, or satanic, for example. This creates an us versus them mindset. Now any criticism of the cult is seen as an attack. You are in the cult or you are an enemy. There is no in-between. Now their whole existence is the group. If they leave, they are nothing and joining the outside world is seen as a very dangerous idea. Many cults preach that anyone that leaves will probably die or be living on the streets in no time. Here the cult's control becomes total, allowing no other beliefs and no other affiliations. This is why cults are called totalist groups. They consume every aspect of the follower's life. While an average Christian, Buddhist or Muslim can enjoy astrology, attend yoga classes and like and subscribe to the Cogito YouTube channel, Someone this far into a cult has nothing outside of it. All activities, relationships, and beliefs revolve around the cult. The deeper you go towards the center of the cult, the more distant from reality you start to become. The beliefs revealed to the inner circles of the cult are sometimes so extreme that the outer circles must be protected from it until they are ready. For example, in Scientology, the public and new recruits were protected from the most extreme ideas like that of the dictator of the galactic confederacy, Xenu, and of alien souls bursting forth from volcanoes and jumping onto human bodies. The public only found out about this story after it was leaked by ex-cult members, journalists, and the internet. Once a follower has reached a stage where the cult's ideology has totally consumed them, they'll believe and do anything. Followers can now be exploited and deployed. In most cases, cult members end up losing a few years of their lives going broke, or ending up with too many supplement pills that they can't sell. But cults can take an unfortunately dangerous route sometimes, which is why it's important to spot a cult's characteristics and the methods they use to isolate and control people.
And that's a basic introduction to cults. It isn't even close to covering everything. There's a lot of debate around this topic. One video simply can't cover everything. This was just a primer so that when we start making videos about specific cults, you'll know what we're talking about. Cults can be very dangerous and should always be avoided. So instead of joining a cult, why not join CuriosityStream? CuriosityStream is a streaming service that gives you access to thousands of documentaries. They even offer exclusive original documentaries featuring great minds like David Attenborough and Stephen Hawking. And right now, they're giving you a 26% discount off the annual plan. So you get unlimited access for less than $15 for a whole year. Along with that discount, you'll also get free access to Nebula when you sign up at curiositystream.com forward slash cogito. Nebula is a streaming video platform I'm helping to build along with a bunch of other creators. We're building Nebula because we want the place for educational creators to be able to try out new and original ideas that wouldn't survive on YouTube because of the algorithm and demonetization. On Nebula, you can watch your favorite YouTube creators content ad free, along with a bunch of Nebula originals like Real Engineering's Logistics of D-Day series and Tom Scott's new game show, Money, all ad free and earlier than YouTube. This video was up on Nebula days ago along with an extended podcast with the Cogito team, where we discussed the research we did for this video and all the interesting stuff we didn't have enough time to cover. This is only available on Nebula and Patreon. So go to curiositystream.com forward slash Cogito and you'll get thousands of high quality documentaries and you'll be helping to support educational creators without having to sit through ads. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. You can find links to all the sources used in the description below, along with a link to my Patreon if you want to help support this channel. On the screen, you can see videos I recommend you watch. And on the other side of the screen, you can see all of my great and incredible patrons who help keep this channel going. Thank you so much for watching this video.